Guerra por Agua, Zona Marginal, here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. As we continue with Jeff Don, the Associated Press national writer, co-author of this investigative series on pharmaceuticals in our drinking water around the country, whether we're talking about anticonvulsants or antidepressants, um, mood stabilizers, what about steroids given to cows and animals, Jeff? Well, this is a whole nother avenue by which these drugs enter our water stream. Animals are given all kinds of drugs. Veterinary drugs are given to animals on farms. All kinds of antibiotics, all kinds of growth-promoting drugs are given to animals on farms. And these drugs eventually run off in rain and end up in the groundwater and in surface waters. And they're a whole nother large source of these pharmaceuticals that enter up, that enter into the waste stream. Uh, many of them are a lot like, or even in some cases, identical to human drugs. Some of them are different. In San Francisco, you write that there's a sex hormone. What is it? Estrone in the water. What is that? How does that affect people? Um, these are used in um, in hormone uh, treatments and uh, that that women take at menopause and such. And um, they're the concern with sex hormones is that they're very powerful at even very low levels. So. Um, there's been some concern for about these kinds of uh, drugs for a longer time, really, than some of the other drugs that that were detected in in the water. Um, it's been more like five, six, seven years that there's been some concern about sex hormones in the context of other kinds of chemicals that also, though not pharmaceuticals, have the ability to disrupt the human endocrine system. The, the scientists call them endocrine disruptors. So that's one of the older concerns in this very new field. And the issue of cancer, people who are prone to cancer. That's exactly right. There, as, as you probably know, there are certain kinds of cancers that are uh, prone to estrogen, and there is some concern that these kinds of uh, pharmaceuticals, even in trace amounts, could possibly contribute to, to cancer. And even as we begin to talk a little bit about what the risk is, uh, what the human risk is, there's even a little bit of research in human cells at, with um, these um, drugs at very, very low amounts of the kind that are find it, found in the environment actually accelerating the growth of human cancer cells. That doesn't mean that they will do that in the human body, but it's just the first scientific hint that perhaps they could. Jeff Dunn, are there standards for drugs in the water around the country? Uh, what is the history of how water is protected, how we know what's in it, and what's going to happen now? Well, there are really very few standards for pharmaceuticals. There are no national standards. In fact, the water utilities we surveyed aren't required to even test for them, much less to treat them. The kinds of things that are regulated in the water, and there are many things that are regulated by the federal government in the water, are things where the risk has been established, industrial chemicals, pesticides, people might think of dioxins, um, there are a lot, people might think of lead, there are a lot of chemicals that are, have known risk to people. Pharmaceuticals at these low levels are a newer kind of contaminant. The risk isn't very well understood yet, though um, we reported probably for the first time a body of emerging science that suggests that these low amounts could be a danger to people in the sense that they apparently can cause bad things to happen in human cells. And there's probably even a stronger case that these pharmaceuticals in the rivers and streams can cause harm to certain kinds of wildlife, fish. There's some work with low-level antidepressants with mussels and snails that suggest that these kinds of drugs can, can impair reproduction. 
So it's just the, the initial body of evidence that's suggesting that maybe there could be, could be risk, but it's not a slam dunk case like it is for certain industrial chemicals that are fully regulated. Uh, in one of the pieces in the AP investigation, No Standards to Test Drugs and Water, um, it's written, Congress held hearings in 2006 in endocrine disrupting compounds after researchers discovered that the Potomac River dotted with sewage treatment plants contains feminized male bass, which create egg yolk proteins, a process usually restricted to females, but the hearings produced no new proposals. Yeah, and there were about by the way, um, six trace